Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your astro and intuitive forecast for the week of August 5th, 2019. The messages that were coming through to me this morning are so impactful, they're so meaningful, they resonate really, really strongly, so I wanna dive in to what it is that I'm seeing, what it is that I'm feeling. I have the charts pulled. I have my notes written down so that I don't forget anything. I wrote these notes down during my meditation. I'll be sharing them with you. Basically, for those of you guys who are brand new to my YouTube channel, how my readings work with this global collective week ahead planetary overview, intuitive overview, is I will pull some cards and I will sit with them and see what the collective energy overall is looking like for the week that we are facing. Then I break it down into three different categories. The first represents Monday through Wednesday. The second is Wednesday through Friday. And the third category is Friday through Sunday. And basically what this will do is show us the energy that's working with us and against us for each of those sections and what is that we all need to know as a collective. Then in a separate section towards the end of this video, you'll see the supporting energy, the things that are working for us, that are lifting us up. And then we're also going to dive into the things that are working against us, the things that we need to be aware of and how we can kind of maneuver around those challenges. And that's how I pull and work with the charts. That's how I work with the planets, is there is no such thing as a positive or a negative thing. It's all about knowing how to work with this energy so that you can maximize those strengths for your highest and greatest good, and then use those weaknesses in order to learn and to grow in the way that the universe supports us and is encouraging us to do. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. First thing that I wanna mention is Jupiter. Jupiter has been retrograde since April, and not only has Jupiter been retrograde, but Saturn and Pluto, and then Mercury just recently was retrograde and is now direct. Jupiter's gonna go direct on the 11th. What I'm seeing and what I've been feeling and the words that I've been hearing as I was writing down my notes is I just can't deal. I can't deal with this right now. This is a person, oh wow, caretaker burnout. I don't know if that resonates with someone, but basically what this is, is a person who is constantly in a position of caring for people or tending people or nurturing them to the point where they can no longer be there and they burn out and they just cannot give any more of themselves. It doesn't matter what field you're in. It doesn't matter what your career is, what your family is like, what your life looks Looks like how old you are how young you are this is something that anybody can experience by giving 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 and caring and tending to fill in the blank what ends up happening is that responsibility that weight that you maybe have taken on for because you were called to it starts to become too much of a burden and that's when like a bell, I'm hearing, I just can't deal with this anymore. So I don't know if that resonates for you in your life, but during Jupiter retrograde, that is how I'm seeing this energy manifest for all of us as a collective. Now, Jupiter retrograde does not always and only make that that energy every time it goes retrograde so and that's the other thing too about it's different from me from other astrologers here on the internet is that i'm not going to reiterate the same messages i always work with the charts intuitively i'm always going to bring intuitive messages for you guys that after i look at the full charts i put all those pieces together to give a collective message from what i've learned from what i've gained in my nine years ten years of experience with studying the charts and working with with them professionally and also personally. So that's what I'm seeing during this retrograde phase for Jupiter is I just can't deal with this. So maybe for some of you guys it is caretaker burnout where you have had to narrow your focus and kind of block out suffering, block out drama, what you what you can call drama where you're blocking out what's going on in the outside world, what's going on around you in your environment, in your community, in order to pay attention to your own needs, your own things that are developing within your life. Let's say it's a relationship, let's say it's your career or school, and that is all well and good. I'm not pointing the fingers or the blame at anyone or anything, and I'm not asking you to feel guilty because that's not at all what this is for everything happens for a reason. Everything happens with divine timing um, and things have a way of sorting themselves out. But 
during the Jupiter retrograde phase, which started in April, that is when this, and it started building up over time, but that is when this energy started manifesting itself and, and it's just like, you know what, I can't deal with this anymore. Now that's for good and, not for good and for bad, but it manifests itself in different ways or every action has an impact. Every decision that you make has a residual you know, consequence, whether that be something that you love and excites you or it's something that disappoints you and frustrates you. But now that Jupiter is going to be going direct, you are going to see the consequence of that. And again, this is not something to feel guilty about, but what I am seeing is that this is when people, when Jupiter goes direct, people are lifting their eyes back up and they're looking out and they're checking in with each other. Maybe for some of you guys, you were in a relationship and you just canceled out the rest of the world in order to spend time with that partnership or whatever. Maybe, again, you were focusing on education or maybe you were just getting out of school and to think about how you're gonna spend the rest of your life or think about school and education in the next few steps for your for your future, it's like, I just can't deal with this anymore. Like, I've been giving and giving and giving a lot of my time and my attention. There's no way in hell that you can expect me to think about, you know, the next stage in the phase when I just close this chapter of my life or this is the chapter in my life that I'm in at currently. So that's a lot of information that it is and I'm getting, but as Jupiter goes direct again in the sign of Sagittarius, a lot of you guys are lifting your eyes up and it's almost kind of shocking what it is that you will see. You will see that there have been friends and family and your community or your world that has been suffering and struggling. It was very important for you not to be connected to that because you could have been a part of that or maybe you needed to focus on this area of your life. But when your eyes open up, you will see that there has been a lot of struggle, a lot of challenges. Some of you guys are being called to go out and to help. Some of you guys are getting called to advocate. Some of you, it's not a global thing. For a good, like 50% of you, I wanna say 40, what, what I'm getting is like 35, 48% of you, it's um, a global thing. But for the rest, it's in your personal lives, it's your family, it's your friends that have really, are in a space right now where they really need your help. They really need, and the word is compassion. This came to me, that word came to me specifically, I think over the weekend, this past weekend. It came through during my meditation, compassion, compassion, compassion. And I think it was when I was looking at some swans. Interestingly enough, I was on a bike ride with my friends and we were looking out and there were two swans that were swimming by and somehow the word compassion came through with that. But that's a message for another video, but yeah, that's something that I was feeling and I was experiencing during my meditation is your friends, your family, you know, you were in this, in your own little bubble, you're in your own little fish tank for good reason. Maybe you need to be quarantined, maybe you need to be separated. But if, when Jupiter goes direct, starting on the 11th, you're going to lift your eyes and you're going to see that there are people around you, not just in the world, but in your own family, within your own friend circle, within your own community, your neighbors, they're very close, that need your support, they need your compassion. And the way to approach this is to not come at it with humor. It's not to come at it with jokes. Jupiter is notorious for you know, being the life of the party and being, um, fun and keeping energy really light. There needs to be balance here because that is what life is. It's not always light and fun or heavy and, and dense. There's they're, they're, they, what they're experiencing and what they've been feeling is very real, it's been very heavy. And it cannot be fixed with just jokes and laughter. In fact, that friend, that family member, that person, that neighbor, that, that person in your community is going to see that joke and see that humor and not be able to relate to it and it's going to make them feel even more isolated. It's gonna make them feel even more alone. And I see a person coming in or you, or maybe it's you that needs this. You're needing compassion. You're needing to be heard. You're needing to be held. You're needing to be nurtured. Not in the way that makes you feel weak or smothered, but in a way that it's like, there needs to be a deep healing here that ha has to happen on a soul, spirit, mental level, and maybe even physical because all of those things are connected. But it's definitely emotional, it's very, it's very spiritual, and it's very um, mental that needs to be 
held with compassion right now because what this person has gone through or what this group, what this, what these people, this community has gone through is a lot where it's the word that just came through just now is they are fractured. They are fractured to the point where they look at themselves and they see aspects in themselves that may be beyond repair and saying that makes my heart bleed because I feel that and I, I feel like in the astrology world in the internet on social media everyone is talking about the plant the retrogrades of the the planets going retrograde and screaming and screaming and screaming in order to promote and to be most trending and they're all of this energy that they're talking about it's very spiritual it's spiritual content but what they're saying is very surface level it's very it ignores the meat and the root and the suffering and the healing that could potentially happen but yet they're using those same words and i know that that sounds wild i don't want to be that person to come on here and sound like a negative person i'm not i'm speaking the truth and when i pull the charts and when i'm working with my clients when i'm working with these charts when i'm working with my cards I'm opening myself up to this energy and I cannot ignore what I'm seeing and feeling for you, for what's going on around you, what's going on within you, and what's going on with, within me and around me. And that's something that we need to talk about. It's something that needs to be discussed. So I'm seeing that um, this week is a, is a moment where as the as the, the as the days come especially around the 11th and moving forward into the rest of this year please remember to approach everyone with compassion because i don't know why but it's this space of i i've been so fractured it, that's the message that has been coming through that is the truth it is all the things that have collectively happened that people can see and a lot that people can't see that are bringing the truth of, I need you to be compassion compassionate with me, I need you to check in. These are the friends that are always strong, they're always smiling, they're always approaching with humor, they always have a good message, they're always enlightened or, you know, encouraging others. These are the same people that you need to make sure that they too are also okay. And it's not just global, and there's a very strong emphasis on it's not globally saving the world it's it's a person or, or you that your friends your family someone close a neighbor it's very close it's very tight knit it's very third house energy someone within your vicinity your home your family third fourth house needs you now or you need them and they need to be there because they you will learn so much this week Starting with this week, and I want you guys to hear me when I say this, is that it's not just this week, it starts this week. This is opening up a book and starting the first chapter and then expecting to, to know the rest of the book. No, you have to keep reading, keep turning those pages, keep asking questions, keep seeking, especially when Jupiter goes direct, which is on the 11th, but we need to talk about it now because that energy is prevalent around us currently. So it's like you're, you're keep discovering, you keep flipping the pages and you keep learning more and more the more that you move along. What I'm also seeing is for so many of you guys, it's time to connect with something that encourages you and supports you. I cannot reiterate this enough, and I have been saying this again and again, we have to be very mindful about what we are hearing, what we are listening to, the words that we speak, who is in our circle, who is in our community, who is in our vicinity, because that impacts the health of the mind. It impacts the health of the spiritual self. And it's so important for you, me, friends, everything. Maybe you're the voice that now needs to say, you guys, look, this is not positive. What is that we're doing? I'm trying to become better for myself. I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to be better. And if I'm doing this for myself, I can't stay in a toxic environment or around toxic people who have are, or are expressing these toxic traits and expect that I'm not going to take this on. You need to surround yourself with encouragement as you move forward. As you're moving forward some of you guys this week are being called somehow when I said that book when I said it's like you're starting the first chapter of the book for some of you guys I want to say 22% 23% is what's coming through are writing a book and you're writing something you're starting a blog you're creating content that is designed to 
encourage people, that is designed to bring messages and healing. These are words and creativity that is coming from an intuitive space within you and you're finally getting called to do that. So I'm seeing that here, definitely. Some of you guys are really truly writing a book, but or maybe it's a post that you're right. It's something that's published. And sometimes we look at published as like, you know, how I published my book, which I should have it back here, but I was showing a friend and my book moved. But but yeah, like it's some of it, we think of publishing as something that's like, oh, you know, I'm at Barnes and Noble, I'm at Target, I'm here, I'm on Amazon, whatever. But it's your content, it's your social media, it's publishing, it's the words, the stream of knowledge that it is that you're sharing, this stream of encouragement. Someone needs to see that and someone needs to hear and feel it. Again, it's global, but it's in your community. It's in your tribe. It's who's watching you. It's who, who knows you personally. So you writing that and putting that out there is going to make a difference. It's going to resolve this tension that's around and don't be surprised if someone enter, enters your dms or messages you and says look you saved my life or you changed my life or that's everything that i needed to hear or i need to talk to you i need to apologize there's something here that needs to come through it's signs it's a lot of signs there's a lot of information that's going on around i need you to pay attention to it some of you guys are seeking things that are right here in front of you. I don't, that's just something that I've been really feeling for this week ahead. It starts this week. It's, you're looking at the bigger picture and it's right here. It's right now. And I think that Jupiter and Saturn retrograde and Pluto retrograde and Mercury retrograde has had you a little distracted so you couldn't see it. But when you actually center and ground yourself and come back within, you will see that what you have been looking for has been right here all along. It has been a blockage that you have created. Again, divine timing is everything. Everything happens for a reason, but there's a word that needs to be said, like an apology, a reconnection. You intuitively feel this, you intuitively know this, and this is the week for that to happen. So that's what I'm seeing <laughs> a lot. That was 20 minutes, almost 18 minutes of me talking about that and that should be this week's meeting uh reading or message overall but no we're going to dive into monday through wednesday monday through wednesday so interesting i don't know how to describe what i'm feeling and what i'm seeing for this i don't sometimes when i get a message I don't know because i'm a human being and my experience here on earth is that of you know my experience so but the messages that come through and the information that comes through is beyond me and I don't know the word for it but it's a word that can describe and hold on to the feeling or the moment when you go into a space where you are grounded it's like connected to the forest it's this like space that surrounds you and it's sacred it's quiet and it has been ignored because we have become industrialized because we have plans we have a routine we have a to-do list Monday through Wednesday it's going back to that space. Sacred is not the right word because the word sacred has no longer, is no longer sacred, everybody's using it now. But if there's another word, it's going back to that space and grounding within it, centering within it, anchoring yourself to that. This could be a physical location, but more than that, I'm getting it's a feeling that can come from a physical location, but it could also be an emotional space. I'm getting, I'm hearing and I'm feeling, um, you know, don't make promises that you can't keep. And I'm seeing that for me. And basically what this is, is that this is not something that is going to fall into your lap. It is something that you have the intention, like you set the intention for, and that's why spirit angels guides are saying don't tell them this because it's going to make a promise to them that they're going to it's going to fall into their lap it's going to come to them this is something that they need to do for themselves 
And so that's what that means. Um, what really is, it's like this break, this space that is disconnected, but reconnected. And it invokes within you a feeling of home, of safety, of sanctuary. And for many of us, we've kind of been neglecting that. And for Monday through Wednesday, it's coming back and anchoring into that. It doesn't matter how fast things are moving. The word that just came through was like speed. Like things are speedily, speeding around us. Like pew, 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 pew. This is nature. This is the heart. There's emphasis on the, the color green. So it's the heart chakra. And going into the space and then reinvesting yourself within that because whatever that is has been neglected. So... For some of you, this space, this sanctuary could be a relationship, it could be a child, it could be um, a project, but it's something that has been neglected. But even though you have neglected it, it didn't stop thriving without you. Without you. So when you return back to it, you're going to be surprised how it has survived, but it still needs you to revisit it. It still needs your attention or it wants your attention. It's going to live on without you, but it's important that you're a part of that. So I'm seeing Monday through Wednesday, if you are called intuitively, because the intuition is everything this week with the high priestess here. These are the two cards that are covering us for this entire week, but intuitively, if you know that there's something that is calling you that's almost like an echo, it's time for you to go back to that. It's time for you to find that space and to reinvest in it. I think that for, in a lot of ways, because of life, because things have been so fast moving, even with the retrogrades, there's been a lot of things popping off around us with the eclipses. And especially when Jupiter goes direct, which is going to be on the 11th, which I've been saying, it's like you have this veil around you or these clouds that have stopped you from seeing. You have these clouds around you that have blocked your view in a way that is clear and obvious. So you're starting to see again, and I think it's courtesy of Jupiter going direct. You're starting to see again, this is where I need to focus my attention. This is where I need to give vital like life to and make sure that this thing is you know, I'm a part of this or that it's being nurtured, that it's being cared and tended to. Now, for Wednesday through Friday, let's discuss this. I'm annoyed. <laughs> I really am. The King of Swords um, has been showing up. For If you're one of my friends, my friend circles, you know I've definitely talked to you about the King of Swords because, yeah. But the King of Swords shows up for Wednesday through Friday. No shade to the King of Swords type of energy. If you're in my Sacred Circle Tarot School, you probably heard me talk about the King of Swords too and how he shows up. I do have a weird, as much as I'm Queen of Cups, as much as I'm Queen of Pentacles, I have always found myself attracted to King of Swords type of individuals. And to see him show up for this week is really annoying. <laughs> That's me so no shade to the king of swords in your life or king of swords energy in your life i'm just personally you know it is what it is but what i'm seeing is a person whose heart needs to be thought out a little bit and i don't want to take away from the power of the king of swords because he brings his own energy that is beneficial and that we need to have within this world that's why i like the king of swords types individual but so he needs to be thought out this energy needs to be thought out it's very static it's very frozen it's very i don't want to say stubborn but it's so irritating to bring warmth into this type of person's life or have an environment where there's you know thriving things and then this person comes through and critiques it all or has like icy energy and that's what i'm seeing here for some of you guys this energy i'm really feeling this it's a facade it's a mask it's to protect yourself why because seven of wands here is very much on the defense it has something that it needs to prove it's protecting itself i get it but during this time i really want to tell you guys that you know and there's a double-edged sword here, of course, because we're working with swords energy. Part of you 
53, 58% of you are going to move on regardless of the King of Swords and spread your seeds in spaces that are fertile with or without them. The other percentage of you are going to try and take your hands and warm that energy because you know that underneath that facade there is a soft heart. There is a very gentle person under all of that and they are <clears throat> frozen and circumstances are static for a reason. And that's what your investment that that's what your investment is, and I'm here for that, and I support that. So, either way, it's you again. You intuitively know where it is that you are called to to go, where you're being pulled to go. Compassion was another word too. Maybe you are coming in and following the heart of a King of Swords type of an individual, or maybe you're trying to convince them of something. If it is worth it to you, maybe things are frozen again for a reason. Maybe things are static for a reason. But when you discover, when you learn, because again, there's this word of education and finding out, discovering more, that start things start making sense, then you'll start to see what was underneath the surface the entire time. But especially after you take Monday through Wednesday in order to spend time with yourself. But well, we shall see. So keep me posted Wednesday through Friday how that energy manifested for you my loves now let's talk about this weekend and that will start friday through sunday what it is that i'm seeing friday through sunday we have the devil card and we have the four of wands with these two cards i feel as though this is breaking free from complex complicated situations in order to nurture and to give yourself the chance <laughs> and I think that once you do that once you free yourself from bonds and binds that restrict you and hold you back you are going to be given the key you're gonna be handed the key not to your destiny but to your own ability to thrive and to feel good because ultimately I think so many of us are moving towards the four of wands and being supported being encouraged um, having stability, having security, and having something that you can count on, a, resources, a resource that is there for you regardless. It comes without conditions. The devil card comes with conditions. If you choose this, this is the punishment. If you do this, this will happen. So what I'm seeing and I'm feeling is um, maybe even consulting your astrology chart, maybe you have a lunar return that's coming or a solar return or something, something about the charts currently is guiding you especially with venus and jupiter trining each other on the eighth and sun trying jupiter there's a lot of emphasis going towards jupiter no wonder why i was talking i spent so much time talking about it in the morning or in the beginning of this video but yeah there's a lot of energy going around jupiter and i'm thinking this is what is what are we invested in where is our heart where 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 is and that we started that talking about this week with we're reconnecting back to that sanctuary and now we're ending with that so that's what i'm seeing is keeping things really simple by removing yourself from complex complicated i don't want to say toxic but situations that intuitively you know maybe this is not the right time for you to be here and that you need to be over here and canceling out distractions canceling out the noise canceling out what's going on you know around so that you can focus on here and give and tend to this four of wands and then i had a vision last week where it was a person like their heart was had the four wands around it and last week you guys kept hearing me say like this is where we belong this is where we belong this is where we're going this is where we belong and these this is a part of that this is all a part of this is finding where you belong by moving into your heart space and whatever it is that you discover and experience during the start of this week are things that I want you to journal and to write down because there's impact within that. There's like a key within that. There's a hidden message that's going to reveal itself when you go back to that sanctuary, when you go back to that space. Now, what is it that's working for us this week? What's working for you is I think that you have learned. That's some real stuff. I think that you have learned and you have experienced a lot. Through your experiences, you have learned so much and you have looked at that. It's almost like you have left and you've transitioned from um, a one space, one environment to the next, 
with that, you have new boxes that you're unpacking, you're unloading, and you're seeing you know, this old memory, kind of like a person who moves and they're unpacking those boxes and they see a photo of someone and it kind of tugs at your heartstrings or remember this time, remember this moment. But all of that is you have learned, like it's showing you how far you've come. That's what's working for you. And now seeing that and knowing that, you're deciding to do something different in this new environment. You're deciding to do something different, something that has an impact, something that has meaning because your strength looks different now. I don't see you being guarded and protected in the way that is detrimental to you. I see you having healthy, healthier boundaries and living and learning without letting your past experiences dictate you in a way that will limit your heart, limit your experiences, limit your potential. So that's something that I'm seeing here and I'm seeing you kind of going out and you know, what can I do with this? It's like a person again who moves into a new space and they're unpacking things and they're like, oh, this would be a great space for this. That's what you're doing with your entire life. What is the potential of the space that I'm in currently? I'm gonna do something different. Of course, there's gonna be some things that make me feel comfortable that I liked from the last space that I'm bringing into my current space, but we're just, I'm working my magic in this space now. So things are different and some things are similar, but a lot of it is me calling the shots and me owning my power and me having healthy boundaries. And now this is my new environment. This is my new sanctuary. This is my new home. This is where I belong. Okay, so what I see for what is working against us is, <sighs> difficult because as I just said what's working for us is unpacking in this new environment and it almost seems as though if a person gets triggered sometimes they can almost revert back to something that is comfortable that they are magnetically pulled towards very much devil energy you know where it's so intoxicating it's so like I thought and then I get pulled back it's what is it that just keeps getting you like it's when it, you know like how person um it's like the easy way out it's that Achilles tendon that you no matter how much you move forward and how much you progress with this person says this thing this way it will get you <laughs> and it's what you are hearing it's what you it's like a sugary spot like a soft spot that it is that you have that you can find yourself accidentally getting trapped in it. It's as if a spider makes a web and you're this little fruit fly and you love a nectarine, man. If you, if there's a nectarine and it is three days old or four days old and it's been sitting out in the sun in the middle of the hot summer and you just happen to be flying by and you see it, you know you're gonna wanna go to that nectarine but that nectarine is hidden behind this spider web and it's like, it doesn't matter how smart you are, it doesn't matter how many lessons you've learned, the nectarine will get you every time. So that's what I'm seeing for us that is working against us is what is that sweet nectarine, that four day old sitting in the hot sun nectarine for you because that is what will get you off. Oh, oh, maybe literally and figuratively, but that will mess you up, that will mess you up. This is something that is not brand new to you. Are we friends? Or can I be honest with you? I'm always gonna be honest with you. With you, with us, I'm always gonna be honest. And if I'm gonna be this honest with the world and I could take the easy way out, you guys, you know I could take the easy way out. I would probably have 100 subscribers on my YouTube channel and I would be trending if I wasn't honest. I'm not. Like, I'm not going to bullshit you, and you know that. So let's, if I'm gonna be honest with you, be honest with yourself, because this is a sacred space. That's the intention that I set for Bahati Life, and my YouTube is that this will always be a sacred space, and for the amount of views that I, is that I get, and the amount of people that participate in these conversations, it has consistently been a sacred space, and negativity just kind of finds its way elsewhere. Why is that intention? But, if I created this space, I want you to be honest with yourself, this is this thing, this thing that you dwell in, this thing that gets you, this is not something new to you. This is not a surprise. <laughs> this, this is not a surprise. And you know that when this shows up, when this, when this is offered to you, when this person texts you, when that is 
on the table, the chances of you indulging in it are very, very high. And I just think that that is your weakness for this week is making sure that there is balance and that if you're going to say yes to anything, if you're going to retreat back into this, that it is going to be something that is giving you health and vitality. I don't care how good it looks. If that nectarine, that four day old sitting in the hot sun nectarine is sitting behind a spider's web and there is a spider waiting for you to make the wrong move, you're gonna get gobbled up, you're gonna lose your legs, you're gonna lose your life, and it's not worth it. Very tempting, it's very enticing, it's very, but it's up to you what you do. And again, this is a cycle. It's a cycle. Every three months, we can expect the same thing. Every time I put that post on my Instagram, I can expect the same response. I can remember that this text message is going to come through. Every time we go to the restaurant, the same restaurant, and I've been really good taking care of myself, if they have that cream cake, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. If I go out with these people after 2 a.m. or if I don't go home at 11 p.m., it's a wrap. What is the consequence, the punishment that's going to come and is it worth it? Is it worth me losing my legs? If you don't want your legs, then fine. Go bite into that nectarine. But if you want your legs, keep it moving. Don't go down that road. Sometimes it, we can't control what's around us, but we can, can control what we do. We can control what we decide to do and it's going to take a lot of restraint, it's gonna um, take a lot of discipline, but you have to weigh the pros and cons. Is it worth it? And if it's not worth it, don't do it! And that's what I'm seeing for this week ahead for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think, I know these videos can be extra long, but you know, I'm a Virgo and I like to give it to you good. Woo! So, um, feel free to share these videos with your friends. Tell your friends about them, tell your family about them, because chances are they could really use some astrological support. If there are more videos, which I do have one video in mind that I want to shoot for you guys, <clears throat> but if there's some way, other way that I can help you, I'm more than happy to do that. Leave it down in the comments. I do have a shop update on Thursday that is coming, this upcoming Thursday, which is, is it the, let me check, the 8th, it's the 8th, is I have a shop update at 1 p.m. Chicago time. For those of you guys who are waiting for custom oils from me, I'm going to be working on those exclusively on Wednesday. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. If you don't feel like sharing this with your friends, then feel free to send me good vibes and positive intentions my way. And that's a perfect way to say thank you for these videos if you would like to. And until then, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.